Hello and welcome to FPL Mate, your best mate for fantasy Premier League content for the 2023-24 season. My name is Dan and today we have your wildcard guide video for game week 30. So if you are thinking about playing your wildcard today, tomorrow or any time this week, hopefully this video is really going to help you out to strategize for the rest of the season. If you enjoy this video, make sure you drop a like, do subscribe if you're new around here. Let's get started. So today guys, we are going to be talking about a very particular strategy for those who have a wildcard and a free hit and possibly even a bench boost left in their team as things stand. So guys, if you are on a slightly different strategy, I really do recommend you check out yesterday's video where we go through all strategies, no matter what chips you have remaining. But in this video, we are going to be talking about those looking to wildcard right now using this strategy you see in front of you guys. So here is a quick recap of all the fixtures we are expecting to see for the remainder of the season and when you might look to use your chips if you are wildcarding in game week 30 or 31. Today, we're going to be talking about a game week 30 30 wildcard and no matter what your situation is if you find yourself maybe with a few players in your team you're not happy with maybe you've got a lot of Luton Town players Forest, uh, Bournemouth potentially there as well and you're not happy of holding these players longer term you want to reset your team with a wildcard this video is going to help you sort yourself out for the rest of the season and I do want to say one more thing before we look at this wildcard team guys is that yesterday in yesterday's video I kind of kind of said that with the idea that maybe the wild card this week's strategy has not maybe gone as perfectly with the fixtures that we have. Maybe it's not as perfect as I first thought it could be, but now I've probably got into it, really look at this strategy in more detail. I do want to kind of just come out and, and apologize really and say, actually, this strategy does really, really work if you do it the right way. So that's what we're going to try and share with you guys today. I've done all the workings out for you, so you don't have to. Let's get started. So this team today is worth 99.5 million. So I've tried to make this team as cheap and as accessible as possible so everyone can afford to build a team just like this, but also allows you that opportunity to either have a bit of money in the bank for future transfers or just make upgrades and improve this team as much as you can. We're starting kind of at the base level and you guys can go crazy from there. So 99.5 is the budget for this team, but you can definitely spend a little bit more on your wildcard team this week if you want to. So let's get started with the goalkeeper and that's going to be Petrovic. So the Chelsea goalkeeper has some really nice fixtures coming up in the next four game weeks. But of course, as we know with Chelsea and Spurs is that they are two teams that are going to double in either 35 or 36, but also guaranteed in game week 37. So two double game weeks coming for Chelsea and Spurs. So we do want to make sure we do go in on those players. And even though Chelsea and Spurs, well, Chelsea blank in, in game week, uh, well, Spurs blank in game week 34, Chelsea only have one fixture in game week 34. We don't need to worry about that too much when we're looking to free hit in 34. So this is very much uh, not worrying too much about the doublers in game week 34. We still have to get a couple of those players. But in general, we're going to focus on Chelsea and Spurs a lot in this team. So we're going to see the likes of Petrovic in goal, nailed on uh, defensive player for Chelsea with some very decent fixtures over the next period. Then you'll be looking to free hit him out in game week 34 when Chelsea play their difficult game against R. Arsenal. And then after that, Chelsea with multiple double game weeks between then and the end of the season. So it's going to be really, really nice to go in on those assets. So Petrovic is uh, the first player on our team sheet. Uh, going into defence, guys, we've got a doggy as our first defender. He's obviously the Spurs defender. Nice and uh, cheap at 5 million. One of the cheaper of the uh, the Spurs defenders. And the doggy, his attacking numbers, not too bad. Not too bad. They're not insane. They're not incredible, but they're not too bad. So you would expect in games against the likes of Luton, West Ham, Ham, Nottingham Forest, attacking returns have some potential there, but also clean sheet potential against the likes of Nottingham Forest could definitely uh, come in there as well. Of course, we would be looking to rotate the doggy a little bit moving forward, and at the end of the video, we are going to go game week by game week, looking at transfers you'd be looking to make, when to play your chips, and stuff like that, uh, to really, really make this strategy come to life, but... For now, for this game week, you'll be looking to play a doggy against Luton Town. Next defender is Malo Gusto. Really, really nice bargain defender who's been in some fantastic form for Chelsea since he's been playing due to Rhys James's injury. His uh, attacking numbers are really good. We're looking at sort of 0.25 to 0.3 expected attacking involvement per game for him when he is on the pitch, which is really, really impressive stuff. He's already got uh, five assists this season, which is, which is decent. So Gusto definitely real nice bargain player to have in your team and again like Petrovic really good fixtures now the only bad fixture he has coming up is Arsenal that's the game week you'd be free hitting anyway 
It's perfect, right, guys? Uh, so, next up, we've got Lascelles. He's our final defender in this team. And that comes with the news that, unfortunately, Botman just cannot catch a break this season, has been diagnosed with an anterior cruciate ligament injury that is going to rule him out for the, uh, the, the rest of the season and going into next season as well. So, Lascelles should be nailed on now for the remainder of the season. Now, granted, Newcastle haven't been the best defence in the Premier League, but they have shown some signs of improvement. And with some decent fixtures, just over the next two, a really nice cheap price tag at 3.9 million. And also the fact that he doubles in game week 37, where we might be looking to bench boost. I think Lascelles is definitely a nice bargain player to have in your team. Again, another player we might be looking to rotate uh, from, uh, from now onwards. But against West Ham, I think I would possibly be looking to play him over some of the other defenders we do have on our bench. Into midfield, uh, Salah. Yeah, straight away, Salah. I know he is a doubler in game week 34. Far, a four, but five, four, four. Um, but he's a player you want to have anyway. Like, regardless. I know you're going to be free hitting in Salah, even if you have him or don't have him. But I think he's just a player you want to have regardless because mostly because of that Sheffield United game at home. Uh, next game week, 31. We've got Crystal Palace coming up as well. Manchester United, he's got a good uh, record there as well. And Brighton at home, you know, this is not a bad captain opportunity for Salah either. So he's definitely a player you want to have in and around your squad. And that wild card gives you the opportunity to bring Salah back into your team. As uh, a lot of people have not had Salah in their team recently, a wild card allows you to bring him straight back in and we know what damage he can do and right now Salah actually a little bit differential 24% ownership uh, in the overall player base which is pretty low for a player of his quality which brings us to Hyunmin Son uh, another reasonably expensive midfielder in this team don't worry we will be able to afford all of the big names in this particular wildcard draft and what a run of fixtures for an attacker Luton, West Ham, Forest and then Newcastle all of the weakest defences really in the Premier League which is a really nice run for a son who, aside from maybe game week 29, which we won't talk about anymore, he's been in some pretty good form, hasn't he? Uh, definitely rewarding the owners of son, but Regardless of whether you had Son in your pre-wildcard team or not, you will be looking to keep him in your post-Game Week 30 wildcard team as well because he is that guy on penalties as well, which will be very, very nice. Probably back to the wing, though, because there's one more uh, Spurs player that I really like for this game week, and that's Richarlison. Kind of got out of fashion a little bit recently with his injury. A lot of people have sold him recently, but you've got to remember how good Richarlison was as an FPL asset prior to uh, maybe Game Week 27 whenever he got injured around that period. But before that, he was doing so, so well, wasn't he? Great fixes again for Richarlison, playing as a central striker despite being listed as a midfielder in FBL. What can go wrong at 6.9 million? It's a really nice price tag for him. His price has dropped significantly since his injury. So it's going to be really, really easy to get back into your team as a nice bargain midfielder who really should reward you. Again, the likes of Son and Richarlison, two double game weeks beyond game week 35, which is really, really really, really good stuff. Gordon is our next pick here. Six million midfielder. Again, decent price for him. He's been an absolute superstar for Newcastle this season and a real legend of FPL this year as well. And another guy who has a double game week all the way in game week 37, as well as having some nice fixtures in the short term as well, with West Ham and Everton coming up at home, followed by Fulham and Spurs. Not too bad there either. You would be looking to free hit Gordon out in game week 34, but until then, he's going to be a really nice asset to have and a potential rotation option for you as well because we do have another uh, attacker on the bench who I think you might quite like. But first of all, we've got to finish off this midfield with Cole Palmer. How could we go about him? If there is one Chelsea player that you absolutely must have for the remainder of this season, it is Cole Palmer. Again, another player with not only great fixtures between now and game week 34 when you are going to free hit, but also he has that double game week, double, double game week, which is going to be absolutely incredible. And I think Palmer Palmer from game week 35 onwards is probably going to be one of the most essential players to own in the entirety of FPL and that's later on right now you could possibly say he is one of the more essential players now as well because he plays Burnley and Sheffield United in the next three We've got Manchester United at home in there as well so Palmer is really an incredible FPL asset to own no matter who you are no matter what your strategy is going to be get him in your team what a guy what a player he's been an absolute FPL legend this year I feel like 
this is Palmer's FPL season and we're just all living in it. Up front, Erling Haaland, not a great fixture against Arsenal, but we know he is the guy, don't we? And after Arsenal, we do have some more favourable fixtures. A home game against an Aston Villa team that has been struggling a little bit more defensively recently, followed by Crystal Palace and that crucial game against Luton in game week 33, where we're all going to be captaining Haaland. Those of you with a triple captain chip might even be thinking about triple captaining Haaland against Luton Town. I don't know about that one personally, but still a really, really important player to have in any FPL team. And I'm really, really glad We've managed to build a team with Salah, Son and Haaland in it. And I think one of the huge advantages wildcarders will have this week is that you'll be able to get all three of these players in quite easily without having to mess your team around, take minus fours and real, really re-jumble your team a lot. So I think it's going to work out pretty well for wildcarders looking to get this trio of premium players into their FPL teams. Of course, Haaland... Doesn't double in game week 34. That's no problem. You're going to free hit then anyway. But he does double in game week 37. So you're going to have him ready to go as probably your captain in double game week 37. Which leaves us with one more slot in the, in the starting 11. And it's actually going to go to Muniz. Muniz has been in some fantastic form recently. He really has been an underrated star of this FPL season. And his stock is just going up and up and up. What a guy. 4.5 million he started off as, and look at what he is doing. Now, next fixtures include the likes of Sheffield United, Nottingham Forest, Newcastle at home, and then West Ham as well. So, Muniz is going to be a real, real nice pickup to have, and a player that a lot of people will underrate, possibly even if they do buy him, they'll end up benching him because they'll think, hey, he's a cheap player. But his form has been so incredible. His underlying numbers are good. He has got to be at this point nailed on in this Fulham team. And uh, yeah, this guy just keeps getting better and better. And looking at these fixtures, I think that trend is only going to continue. So again, another huge advantage that wildcarders have is they can bring in these luxury players like Muniz, a kind of luxury transfers that maybe if you weren't on a wildcard, you probably wouldn't prioritize getting in Muniz. You'd be looking more at Salah or Palmer, but with a wild card, let's go for Muniz in there as well, which brings us to the bench, starting off with Onana. Onana, double game week 37 for Manchester United, hopefully he can pick up some save points there, but also not a bad goalkeeper to rotate with Petrovic in the interim. We've got Hoyland, uh, not spoken about him in a while because of that injury, but prior to his injury, again, a player who's doing really, really well. So nice to be able to get players like Hoyland and Richarlison back into your FPL team using a wild card. So many people ditch these players due to their injury, but before that, the form was amazing, and you would expect after that, the form is going to continue to be amazing there as well. Would probably be looking to bench Hoyland, however, this game week. That's just because we've got the likes of Muniz against Sheffield United, Gordon against West Ham. I don't I think there's a strong need to play Hoyland, though some of you guys might argue that if you have enough faith in Arsenal, that possibly you could play Hoyland instead of Haaland. Don't know if I uh, completely agree with that one, but I'll leave that one with you. Of course, on the bench, we've also got Gabriel, super crucial Arsenal defender to have because Arsenal have just been so good defensively. But this game's away against Manchester City. And if there's one game you are not going to back an Arsenal defender in, it's probably this one. We've also got the cheap defender Van Heck of Brighton. He plays against Liverpool away from home. So not really a fixture you'd be looking to play him in either. However, at his price, really, really cheap, around £4 million. He's going to be a nice player to take forward to double game week 37 for a potential bench boost there. So that is the starting team with the bench. I'm going to throw a captain's armband on Mo Salah. I think he's possibly the captain for this week. Although I'm sure a lot of people will be talking about Hyun Son as well. So let's throw the vice captain on him. And what we've built here is a team that is fantastic for game week 30. It's fantastic for the next few game weeks as well. Maybe there is not a huge amount of Arsenal, Manchester City in this team. Maybe not quite enough Liverpool for your liking, but I think that's just kind of the uh, the hand that has been dealt. If you are feeling that you need to wildcard now, you are going to have to slightly more, you think slightly more longer term and, and have a lot of those players in your team that double in game week 37 rather than looking at the short term Arsenal and Liverpool players who double in 34 since you're going to be free hitting in that game week anyway so with that said with that done with that team on paper I want to go week by week and show you how you move this team into game week 34 with a free hit and then beyond into game week 37 because this team guys I've not said this but 
This team is super flexible. It is super flexible. It gives you so much room to do uh, whatever you want with it, really. It leaves you money in the bank. You will have lots of spare transfers to use in those emergency situations, which you're going to find out very, very soon. And also, it not only will give you 11 double game week players for your free hit in 34, of course, but it will also give you 15, yes, 15 double game week players for game week 37 as well. Perfect for a bench boost. 15 out of 15 double game week players with this team. Guys, it's going to be amazing. Six double game week players in 35, 36, 15 in, in 37, 11, or I guess 15 if you include the bench players in 34 as well. It maximizes everything. Everything, every single game week, you will have the maximum amount of fixtures physically possible, which is incredible. So guys, let's go week by week on this team. So guys, as always, we are back on the Fantasy Football Hub My Team Tool. This is just a tool I like to use for planning out my FPL team for future game weeks, as well as getting those predicted points, which are always a good indication if the predicted points are high. It often is a very good sign. So guys, do go check it out if you would like to start planning your team for yourself. The link is at the top of the description for you. But here is the team all loaded up in this tour. And we're going to go week by week and show you exactly how it is going to work for each game week. And I think you're going to like what you see and kind of maybe start to understand why this strategy actually really does work quite well and uh, yeah I'm quite impressed by that so obviously in game week 30 you have used your wild card this is the team that you will be uh, you will have for game week 30 so let's move on into game week 31 where things will look slightly different because we'll be looking to play Gabriel against Luton rather than a uh, doggy against West Ham so just one switch there and then we would probably be looking to roll our transfer or make a luxury transfer because I think a big thing, if you are wildcarding now with a view to bench boost in 37, things will go wrong. There will be occasional injuries and, um, you know, some circumstances will change. You know, maybe we find by game week 37, some teams have nothing to play for anymore or, you know, uh, some teams fall badly out of form or there's big injuries that really bring up a new option that is a must have or one of the players you do have gets injured. There's so much that can happen. Suspensions as well. There really, really is. So I'm going to make sure in this strategy, we are constantly rolling the transfer. But really what I mean is it's a bonus luxury transfer that you can use to fix an issue if it comes by. So game week 31 is going to be an example of a week where you don't need to make a transfer if everything goes perfectly to plan. But inevitably, it won't and you might need to use it. Going into game week 32, exact same situation. Looking to roll that transfer if possible. But... We will be looking to uh, make another change here as well because we are making, uh, we, we're putting on a doggy now and Lascelles has gone onto the bench because the doggy plays Forest at home, which I think is a pretty decent fixture. But again, like I say, we will be looking to uh, roll that transfer this week. I think one advantage of moving Lascelles to your bench as well here is that you have a Muniz against Newcastle. You can focus on wanting Muniz to score and do well um, without having to worry about Lascelles' clean sheet getting uh, wiped out there so you could get to take full of advantage of that situation in this game week as well we have that double Chelsea defense against uh Sheffield United which is going to be hopefully uh bringing some nice clean sheet points but you can see you guys week by week this team the whole team has great fixtures pretty much every single game week which brings us to game week 33 and this is where you're going to make your first double transfer because we've been looking to start removing some of those players who don't have a double game week in 37 and replace them with players who do have a double game week in 37 and the two players you'll be looking to remove are Gabriel and Muniz. Great players to own in the short term, great players to own overall, but unfortunately for them, neither of these teams are going to double in 37. So we need to start preparing for that by game week 33 with a double transfer. And we've brought in uh, Ake. It could be Kyle Walker. You really you just be looking to bring in any Man City defender here, really, to improve your core of Man City players. Really nice timing to do it here as well, because this is the game week where we actually have, uh, we actually have, Man City playing against Luton Town, which is pretty nice. And, and from here, Arsenal's fixtures do actually go downhill a little bit. So you can see at uh, game week 33, Aston Villa, tricky one. Uh, game week 34, well, I mean, look, it's a double game week, but you're going to be free hitting then anyway. Then game week 35, Spurs, 36, Bournemouth. Our fixtures are not ideal for the, from there, from, from uh, Arsenal's point of view. So yes, 
that double change there. Uh, we've also removed Muniz and replaced him with Jao Pedro, who is, of course is going to have a double game week in 37, according to our current projections, which I don't think is going to change too much, to be honest. And uh, he's got a nice fixture against Burnley. So at the same time, we're removing uh, Muniz, who has a fixture against Fulham, which is okay. But uh, I think I like Jao Pedro with his penalty taking skills against Burnley a little bit better. Now, you might have noticed that this game week of, for on, our, on the tool that we're using right now, it does say minus 0.4 million in the bank. The reason for that is because this tool, uh, the way I've set it up, I've gone off a budget of 100 million. So this assumes that you have a budget of 100 million. Of course, if you have a budget of 100.4 million or more, then you are going to be able to afford to make those transfer moves. And I, I think that probably uh, applies to most of us, right, guys? So yes, game week 34, uh, 33, your team is looking strong. You've made two transfers to start to set up for game week 37. But game week 34, you're going to free hit because this team uh, only has one doubler for game week 34, which is a bit of a problem if you are not free hitting right now. But... If you have that free hit chip, nice and easy, we go to a free hit team. And this is what I've come up with for a free hit team for Game Week 34. Um, and obviously, by the time we get to Game Week 34, things might change a little bit. But a free hit team might look like this. Pickford in goal, Gabriel, Trent and Munoz uh, in defence. Munoz, the kind of attacking fullback of Crystal Palace, who will be playing against West Ham and Newcastle, both at home, which I think is quite appetising. In midfield, we've got Salah, captain, with the double game week against Everton and Fulham. We've got Saka there as well. Eze is our next midfielder. Really nice double game week, actually, for Crystal Palace. If you can identify the right players to get. Get yeah, Eze is got to be in that conversation. Erdegaard, I've gone for as my third Arsenal player. You could potentially go for Saliba if you want to take a risk on Kai Havertz. There's some potential there as well. And Sarabia completes my midfield here. But if we have a fit, you know, Neto or, or He Chan, then maybe those players come into the conversation there as well. I would say that fifth midfield slot is probably the most up for debate in this team. I mean, maybe you could go for Elise, possibly there as well. Is there any Everton midfielders that you like? Possibly not, but just throwing Sarabia in there for now as he's been in reasonably good form and should be reasonably nailed on whilst those other guys are injured as well. But by the time we get to game week 34, things might change a little bit there. Up front, we've got Solanke and Darwin Nunez, two players with double game weeks, which is very, very nice indeed. Uh, Aston Villa and Wolves for Bournemouth and Everton and Fulham again for Darwin there. So should provide some decent uh, some decent returns there with many opportunities to get the goals. Uh, on the bench, I've gone for Neto, Mateta, Nori, and Branthwaite. Of course, any of these players you could potentially put in the starting 11 as well, but I've opted to put these players on the bench. And there is your free hit at 34 team. Reasonably cheap, well under uh, 100 million. I think it's around 97 million, maybe slightly more, but it's uh, nice and cheap. You can potentially make some upgrades to this as well if you have the budget to do so. Other players that look quite nice for this game week include the likes of Cunha, Diogo Jota, if he's available. We spoke about Kai Havertz, Luis Diaz, various options you can go for there. Robertson, if he's available. Allison in goal, if you wanted to go that route for your Liverpool uh, defender, I guess. And uh, yeah, the free hit in game week 34 looks really, really good, but we've got to move on. Because we need to go back to the main team here. So, game week 35 is what we're going to be looking at next. And this is an, an interesting one. Because although you don't need to make a transfer. Again, this is a, one of the game weeks where, you know, you can roll your transfer. Or make a luxury transfer. Or make a trans a reactive transfer. Uh, there's no must transfer that you, you make at this point. Uh, however... At this point, we might see Spurs and Chelsea double. And if Spurs and Chelsea double in 35, what you'll be looking to do is you play Petrovic and a doggy instead of Anana and Ake. So you probably just make that very, very simple switch there. Probably look to play Lascelles at home against Sheffield United. And then moving on to game at 36, if this is the game week where we see Chelsea and Spurs double, then again, you'll be moving a doggy onto your starting 11, probably removing Van Heck in order to do so. Again, there is no strong need to make a transfer in game week 36. So, if we've got an injury, for example, if we've got Reese James comes back and is taking minutes off Malo Gusto, then maybe you use a transfer there. Maybe if we see Hoyland has fallen out of form, then maybe use a transfer there. Maybe we see Jao Pedro is injured again or Richarlison has fallen out of favour. All of these things is why I keep saying 
roll the transfer or make a luxury transfer because we're basically these transfers are stand-ins for making that emergency transfer which you are going to need when you are planning from game week 30 in order to the bench boost in 37 you're going to need those extra transfers to make those unexpected changes to your team but there is one transfer I would make in game week 37 when you look to bench boost and that would be to remove Salah and replace him with Foden or De Bruyne to get that 15th double game week player yes guys uh this uh tool hasn't updated yet because there is no official game week 37 double game week yet it is not uh, officially confirmed yet but just just trust me it's, it's, it's gonna happen we like we pretty much know looking at all of the fixtures we pretty much know what is gonna happen it's not guaranteed but it's like 99% at this point um but yeah we know what game week 37 is gonna look like 99% and it's gonna involve every single one of these 15 players doubling and therefore you have that bench boost of course like I said we've we've had three spare or luxury transfers that we haven't used in the build-up between 30 and 37 so even if three of these players finds that you know are not in favor anymore for through injury suspension whatever then you can fix that situation with those three spare transfers which is absolutely incredible whatever changes of circumstances we have i know a lot of people have been quite critical about the fact that in game week 37 maybe it's a bad week to bench boost because what if some teams have nothing left to play for well i mean yes that's possible but really when i look at the likes of manchester city are going to be competing with arsenal and liverpool for the title with three games to spare in game week 37 we're going to have the likes of spurs chasing that top four top Top five is also a big thing as well, which is why we're going to see the likes of Manchester United, Brighton, Newcastle still with a lot to play for in those final games. Even Chelsea, you know, if they, even if they are a little bit off the pace, Chelsea will be playing very much for pride. No other competitions to be worrying about um, by that point, uh, other than you know maybe uh, maybe uh, the FA Cup. But um, in general, I think a lot. I'm not too concerned really about any of these particular players having nothing to play for now if you look at maybe some you know hard stuck mid table teams you know in crystal palace or, or something like that for example who is not really in any danger of going down not really going to compete for european places that those are the kind of teams that we see rotate a little bit but that actually plays into the hands of the other teams because the other teams get to play these teams that are rotating and who have nothing left to play for these are the teams that will be probably by this point still going full strength but like i said we have those three spare transfers to make any modifications if we need to right up until the last minute in order to fix those circumstances if they come up. Which brings us finally to game week 38. Game week 38, you can kind of do whatever you want. You can either roll a transfer into game week 38 and make two free transfers. Uh, game week 38 is always a fun game week where there is plenty of things going on. You know, if you wanted to bring Salah back into your team, for example, maybe you could remove Foden and bring Salah back in, for example, if that's something you'd like to do. If you wanted Saka for the final day of the season, maybe you fancy going for him. Uh, you can maybe remove Gordon and, and go for, uh, I don't know, uh, Eberechi Eze or someone or Havertz. Like the, the opportunities are endless. You guys can really go crazy by Game Week 38. And what I don't want to do is speculate too far in advance because it is so far away and we don't know what's going to happen exactly. But that's what this uh, this strategy is all about, making sure that we have a solid team in the short term, can free hit effectively in 34, have that nice bench boost for Game Week 37, but also have that continuous flexibility to make sure that we can quickly adapt to any changes that do come our way. And they will come our way, believe me. This is the season of injury so uh we'll definitely have a little bit of that here and there so hopefully that all makes sense to you guys as a strategy and i think it is going to work much better than i actually thought it did yesterday and it took me really looking into this and going into a lot of detail and spending a few hours really going to into the depths of this strategy to understand that actually it's pretty good it really is pretty good so uh yeah there you go Guys, if you enjoyed this one, make sure you do drop a like. It really does help out the channel so much, and I really do appreciate it a lot. Leave any comments you have on this strategy, how you might change or modify it, as well as any questions you might have as well. Don't forget to check out yesterday's video where we did go through all of the other strategies. So if you are not looking to wildcard this week, or maybe you've got a slightly different strategy in mind, we might cover it in yesterday's video and go into some details there. So no matter what chips you have, that is going to be useful to you. But aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching once again, and I will see you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.